Now, I'm going to go back to the Old Testament for a moment and so that I can properly explain what I'm talking about. In Genesis 21 is one of the most talked about stories in churches and in Christianity and the Old Testament. There is all around the world, every religion talks about Abraham. It says, The Lord visited Sarah, and as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, and as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born into him. Now the story goes on, and Sarah's only mentioned a couple more times here. And guys, it's like leaving out the best part of the story when they remove the book of Jasser, because it was written, uh, included the book of Genesis. Now you can pause and read any of this, guys. I've got a lot of ground to cover for this video, so I'm going to move through it. But, but uh, just, uh, again, stay with me here. Now, but Sarah's mentioned here, and this is when she's... Ha she uh, cast uh, Hagar and Ishmael out of the camp. Now, she's not mentioned again until the funeral where uh, Abraham buries her. Now, that's kind of strange in a way because what happens is the story goes on from here, and Abraham takes Isaac up on the mountain for the sacrifice. Now, now we get to really a lot of the left out part. Genesis 22, one of the most popular chapters in the Bible. It's not that long. I'm just going to read through this, and then I'm going to read it through the book of Jasser. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Now guys, if you were just reading this as a story, you would say, wait a minute now, where would Sarah just go along with this, her only son, after she was 99 years old, had finally gotten a son and she just going along with this to think about it from a mother's point of view. Not only that, when they take out a lot of the Bible, they hide Satan, but they also take out a lot of the true emotions of God. Those true emotions are still in the spirit of his children. They were then and they are now. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Then Abraham said unto his young men, remember these young men, when we get to the other section. Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Now have you seen Satan mentioned yet? And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they were both of them together. They went both together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place where God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac and his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched his hand, forth his hand, and took the knife to slay him. And the angel of the Lord came to him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. Seest thou that hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me? And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place, Jehovah Jireh, as they said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Now, in the end of chapter 22, God blesses Abraham 
because of what he did and says, I will spread your seed around the world, all the nations. Now, and then we go to, let's go to Genesis 23. This is the next time Sarah's mentioned, the mother. And Sarah was 107 and 20 years old. These were the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kijat Arba. Now, this is the same place. This is the land of the Canaanites, the same as Hebron in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep before her. Now, what had happened here? She wasn't mentioned again. She was 99 when she had uh, Isaac. And what happened? What, what did, gen, did no one question that part of Genesis, guys? Listen. It never said that they were divorced, that she moved off to the land of Canaan, Canaan, or anything. It doesn't mention that. Would, why would she do that? Was it because she was mad because of what had happened, that Isaac had almost died? What had happened? She just, all of, now Abraham stood up before his dead, from before his dead, and spake unto the sons of Heth, saying, I am a stranger and sojourner with you. Give me a possession of a buying place with you that I may bury my dead out of my sight. Now, what had happened? That is what's been taken out. The emotions and the observation of Satan. We're, I'm about to do that. And I'm sure Satan and his minions are going to hate this part because it, this is the end time parts that are being brought forth. Now, the book of Jasser, chapter 22, is getting into the part of Genesis that we just talked about. Now, again, because of time, I'm just going to touch base here, but Ishmael had grown, and he rose up, took his wife and children and his cattle and belongings to him, and journeyed from there and went to his father in the land of the Philistines. Now, Abraham related to Ishmael. That was his father, remember? Father of all nations. The transaction with his first wife. Now, these the days increased, and he reached 26 years. I, uh, Ishmael was 26 years old. Now, he was a little older than Isaac. Remember, he was born before. But uh, it talks about the quarreling, and it goes on. Now, I'm going to kind of skip through this again because of time, and you can go. I will link this, and you can read it. Now, same chapter. I'm going to go to verse 40. And Isaac, the son of Abraham, was growing up in those days, and Abraham, his father, taught him the way of the Lord, to know the Lord, and the Lord was with him with Isaac and Abraham. And when Isaac was 37 years old, Ishmael, his brother, was going about with him in the tent, and Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac. How old was Isaac, guys? You've been told it was not told. Everyone just assumed he was a young child. It's very important because he was of the, of the age, guys, here, to where he can make his decisions. And what did he do? Let's read. And Ishmael boasted of himself to Isaac, saying, I was 13 years old when the Lord spoke to my father to circumcise us, and I did according to the word of the Lord which he spoke to my father, and I gave my soul unto the Lord, and I did not transgress his word which he commanded my father. And Isaac answered Ishmael, saying, Why dost thou boast to me about this, about a little bit of thy flesh which thou didst take from thy body concerning which the Lord commanded thee? And as the Lord liveth, Listen, this is Isaac, the God of my father Abraham. If the Lord shall say unto my father, Take now thy son Isaac and bring him up an offering before me, I would not refrain, but I would joyfully accede to it. And the Lord heard the word that Isaac spoke to Ishmael, and it seemed good in the sight of the Lord, and he thought to try Abraham in this matter. He had a little help. The days arrived when the sons of God came and placed themselves before the Lord. And Satan also came with the sons of God before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, What is thy word to me concerning all the children of the earth? And Satan answered the Lord and said, I have seen all the children of the earth who serve thee, and remember thee when thou require anything from thee. And when thou givest them the thing which they require from thee, they sit at their ease, and forsake thee, and they remember thee no more. Hast thou seen Abraham the son of Terah, who at first had no children, and he served thee, and erected altars to thee whenever, wherever he came, and he brought up offerings upon them, and he proclaimed thy name continually to all the children of the earth? And now that his son Isaac is born to him, 
He has forsaken thee. He has made a great feast for all the inhabitants of the land, and the Lord he has forgotten. Abraham and Isaac had not forgotten God, but this is the great accuser, Satan. He still has his trolls running around. For, for amidst all that he has done, he brought thee no offering, neither burnt offering, nor peace offering, neither ox, lamb, nor goat, of all that he killed on the day that his son was weaned. Even from the time of his son's birth till now, being thirty-seven years, he built no altar before thee, nor brought any offering to thee, for he saw that thou did give what he requested before thee, and he therefore forsook thee. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou thus considered my servant Abraham? For there is none like him upon earth, a perfect and upright man before me. He was of the Adamic bloodline, remember this, one that feareth God and avoided evil, as I live, were I to say to him, Bring up Isaac, thy son, before me. He would not withhold him for me much more if I told him to bring up a burnt offering before me for his flock or herds. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Speak then now unto Abraham, as thou hast said, and thou wilt see whether he will not this day transgress and cast aside thy words. Now let's go to Jasser chapter 23, the very next chapter. And at that time the Lord the Lord came to Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said to him, Take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which shall be shown for thee. For there wilt thou see a cloud in the glory of the Lord. And Abraham said within himself, how shall I separate my son Isaac from Sarah his mother in order to bring him up for a burnt offering before the Lord? You see, guys, these emotions that were stripped away. And Abraham came into the tent, and he sat before Sarah his wife, and he spoke these words to her. Guys, he had to lie. She would not have stood for it one moment, neither would any mother on earth. My son Isaac is grown, and he has not for some time studied the service of his God. Now tomorrow I will go and bring him to Shem, and Eber his son, and there he will learn the ways of the Lord. For they will teach him to know the Lord as well as to know that when he prayeth continually before the Lord, he will answer him. Therefore, there he will know the way of serving the Lord his God. And Sarah said, Thou hast spoken well, go, my Lord, and do unto him as thou hast said, but remove him not at a great distance from me, Neither let him remain there too long, for my soul is bound within his soul. I've seen this. And Abraham said unto Sarah, My daughter, let us pray to the Lord our God that he may do good with us. Abraham knew. And Sarah took her son Isaac, and he abode all that night with her, and she kissed and embraced him and gave him instructions till morning. I've seen my son go off to the Air Force. I've seen what his mother did. And she said to him, O oh, my son, how can my soul separate itself from thee? And she still kissed him and embraced him, and she gave Abraham instructions concerning him. Just all of this is left out. And Sarah said unto Abraham, O oh, my Lord, I pray thee, take heed of thy son, and place thine eyes over him, for I have no other son nor daughter but him. O oh, forsake him not. If he be hungry, give him bread. And if he be thirsty, give him water to drink. And do not let him go on foot, neither let him sit in the sun. Now you see why I said that um, a mother would not stand by and just let this happen. And she said, And Sarah wept bitterly the whole night on account of Isaac and gave him instructions till morning. And in the morning Sarah selected a very fine and beautiful garment from those garments which she had in the house that Abimelech had given to her. And she dressed Isaac, her son, therewith, and she put a turban upon his head. And she enclosed a precious stone in the top of the turban, and she gave them provision for the road. And they went forth. And Isaac went with his father Abraham, and some of their servants accompanied them to see them off the road. And Sarah went out with them, and she accompanied them upon the road to see them off. And they said to her, Return to the tent. And when Sarah heard the words of her son Isaac, she wept bitterly, and Abraham, her husband, wept with her, and their son wept with them a great weeping, for those who went with them also wept greatly. And Sarah caught hold of her son Isaac, still hadn't let go, guys, 
and she held him in her arms, and she embraced him, and continued to weep with him. And Sarah said, Who knoweth if after this day I will ever see thee again? And they still wept together, Abraham, Sarah, and Isaac. And all those that accompanied them on the road wept with them. And Sarah afterward turned away from her son, weeping bitterly. And all her men servants, maid servants, returned with her to the tent. And Abraham went with Isaac his son to bring up an offering before the Lord, as he had commanded him. Now, at this point, Abraham's the only one that knows the full plan. Now, I told you to remember the two young men Abraham took with him. He said, Abraham took two of his young men with him, Ishmael, the son of Hagar, and Eliezer, his servant. And they went together with him, and whilst they were talking in the road, the young men spoke these words to themselves. And Ishmael said to Elizar, now my father Abraham is going with Isaac to bring him up for burnt offering to the Lord as he commanded him. Now, how did Ishmael know this? Now when he returneth, he will give unto me all that he possesses to inherit after him, for I am his firstborn. And Elizar answered Ishmael and said, Surely Abraham did cast thee away with thy mother and swear that thou shouldest not inherit anything of all his possesses. And to whom will he give all that he has with all his treasures, but unto me his servant, whom has been faithful in this house, who has served him night and day, and has done all that he desired me. To me he will bequeath at his death all that he possesses. So you got Elijah the servant and Ishmael arguing over who's going to get what. And whilst Abraham was proceeding with his son Isaac along the road, listen, this is why I came here. Satan came and appeared to Abraham in the figure of a very aged man, humble and of contrite spirit, and approached Abraham and said unto him, Art thou silly or brutish that thou goest to do this thing this day to thine only son? Here's Satan standing before God. There He's back down here. Satan can appear, and when he falls, this lamp falls to the earth, and a third of the men are deceived and die spiritually. He's going to be able to do this again when he's here to men and women. For God gave thee a son in thy latter latter days in thy old age, and will thou go and slaughter him this day because he committed no violence? And will thou cast the soul of thine only son to perish from the earth? Dost thou not know and understand that this thing cannot be from the Lord? For the Lord cannot do unto man such evil upon earth to say unto him, Go slaughter thy child. And Abraham heard this and knew that it was the word of Satan who endeavored to draw him aside from the way of the Lord. But Abraham would not hearken to the voice of Satan, and Abraham rebuked him so that he went away. Are you going to be able to not do that? Or are you even going to recognize that Satan can appear as he wishes a man or a woman? Bold, young. And Satan returned and came to Isaac, and he appeared unto Isaac in the figure of a young man, comely and well favored, and appeared, and he, and he approached Isaac and said unto him, Does thou not know and understand that thy old silly father bringeth thee to the slaughter this day for naught? Now you want to know why Isaac was blessed? Listen, there now therefore my son do not listen nor attend him, for he is a silly old man, and let not thy precious soul and beautiful figure be lost from this earth. And Isaac heard this and said unto Abraham, Hast thou heard my father that which this man has spoken? Even thus has he has spoken. Abraham answered his son Isaac and said to him, Take heed of him and do not listen to his words, nor attend to him, for he is Satan, endeavoring to draw aside this day from the command of God. And Abraham still rebuked Satan, and Satan went from them, and seeing he could not prevail over them, he hid himself from them and went and passed before them in the road. Now here's Satan getting into a second level of power, of illusion and delusion, the great delusion. And he transferred, transformed himself into a large brook of water in the road, and Abraham and Isaac and his two young men reached that place, and they saw a brook large and powerful as the mighty waters. They entered the brook and passed through it, and the waters at first reached their legs. Understand this spiritually also, guys. And they went deeper in the brook, 
the work of Satan, and the waters reached up to their necks, and they were all terrified on account of the water. And whilst they were going over the brook, Abraham recognized that place, and he knew there was no water there before. And Abraham said to his son Isaac, I know this place in which there was no brook nor water. Now, therefore, is it is this Satan who does all this to us, to draw us aside from the day, from this day, from the commands of God. And Abraham rebuked him and said unto him, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, be gone from us, for we go by the commands of God. And Satan was terrified at the voice of Abraham. And he went away from them, and he, the place became dry land as it was at first. And Abraham went with Isaac toward the place that God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place at a distance which God had told him of. Now, guys, we're, we're into a whole new story right in the middle of a few verses of Genesis. And a pillar of fire appeared to him that reached from the heaven to earth, and a cloud of glory upon the mountain, and the glory of the Lord was seen in the cloud. And Abraham said to Isaac, My son, dost thou see in that mountain which we perceive at a distance, that which I see upon it? And Isaac answered and said unto his father, I see, and lo, a pillar of fire and a cloud, and the glory of the Lord is seen upon the cloud. And Abraham knew that his son Isaac was accepted before the Lord for a burnt offering. And Abraham said to Elijah, the servant, and to Ishmael, his son, Do you also see that which we see upon the mountain, which is at the distance? They answered and said, We see nothing more than like the other mountains of the earth. And Abraham knew that they were not accepted before the Lord to go with them, because they did not have eyes to see. And Abraham said to them, Abide ye with the ass, while I and Isaac, my son, will go to yonder mount and worship there before the Lord, and then return to you. And Elizar and Ishmael remained in that place, as Abraham had commanded. And Abraham took wood for a burnt offering, placed it upon his son Isaac, and he took the fire and the knife, and they both went to that place. Now Isaac was thirty-seven years old. He could handle the wood. And when they were going along, Isaac said to his father, Behold, I see here the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb that is to be the burnt offering before the Lord? And Abraham answered his son Isaac, saying, The Lord hath made a choice of thee, my son, to be a perfect burnt offering instead of the lamb. This is where Isaac has to, excuse me, Abraham has to tell his son Isaac what is going on. And this is why Isaac was so blessed. And Isaac said unto his father, I will do all that the Lord spoke to thee with joy and cheerfulness of heart. And Abraham said, again said unto his, Isaac his son, is there in thy heart any thought or counsel concerning this which is not proper? Tell me, son, I pray thee, O oh, my son, conceal it not from me. Imagine the emotions Abraham was going through. Um, he was in his heart. Could Isaac change his mind for him? And Isaac answered his father Abraham and said unto him, O oh, my father, as the Lord who liveth, and as thy soul liveth, there is nothing in my heart to cause me to deviate either to the right or to the left from the word that, is word that he has spoken to thee. Neither limb nor muscle has moved or stirred at this, nor is there in my heart any thought of evil counsel concerning this, but I am joyful and cheerful heart in this matter. And I say, Blessed is the Lord who has this day chosen me to be a burnt offering before him. And Abraham greatly rejoiced at the words of Isaac, and they went on and came together to that place that the Lord had spoken of. And Abraham approached to build the altar in that place, and Abraham was weeping. Wouldn't you be? And Isaac took stones and mortar and, until they had finished building the altar. Isaac helped him build it. And Abraham took the wood and placed it in order upon the altar which he had built. And he took his son Isaac and bound him in order to place him upon the wood which was upon the altar to slay him for a burnt offering before the Lord. And Isaac said to his father, Bind me securely, and then place me upon the altar, lest I should turn and move and break loose from the force of the knife upon my flesh, and therefore profane the burnt offering. And Abraham did so. 
And Isaac still said to his father, He could see him there crying. He said, O oh, my father, when thou shalt have slain me and burnt me for an offering, take with thee that which shall remain of my ashes to bring to Sarah my mother, and to say to her, This is the sweet-smelling savor of Isaac. But do not tell her this if she should sit near a well or upon any high place, lest she should cast her soul after me and die. And Abraham heard the words of Isaac, and he lifted up his voice and wept when Isaac spake these words, and Abraham's tears gushed down upon Isaac his son. And Isaac wept bitterly and said to his father, Hasten thou, O my father, and do with me the will of the Lord our God as he commanded thee. And the hearts of Abraham and Isaac rejoiced at this thing which the Lord had commanded him, but the eye wept bitterly while the heart rejoiced. And Abraham bound his son Isaac and placed him on the altar upon the wood, and Isaac stretched forth his neck upon the altar before his father. And Abraham stretched forth his hand to take the knife to slay his son as a burnt offering before the Lord. At that time the angels of mercy came before the Lord and spake to him concerning Isaac, saying, O Lord, thou art a merciful and compassionate king over all that thou hast created in heaven and earth, and thou supportest them all. Give therefore ransom and redemption instead of thy servant Isaac and pity and have compassion upon Abraham and Isaac his son, who are this day performing thy commands. Hast thou seen, O Lord, how Isaac the son of Abraham, thy servant, is bound down to the slaughter like an animal? Now therefore let thy pity be roused for, for them, O Lord. At that time the Lord appeared unto Abraham, and called to him from heaven, and said unto him, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God in performing this act, and I am not and in not withholding thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw, and behold, a ram was caught in the thicket by his horns. That was the ram which the Lord God had created in the earth in the day that he made earth and heaven. Are you listening? For the Lord had prepared this ram for that day to be a burnt offering instead of Isaac. And this ram, ram was advancing to Abraham when Satan caught hold of him and entangled his horns in the thicket that he might not advance to Abraham in order that Abraham might slay his son. You see how Satan operated then? This is how he's going to operate very shortly, my friends. And Abraham, seeing that the ram advancing to him and Satan withholding him, fetched him and brought him before the altar, and he loosened his son Isaac from his binding, and he put the ram in his stead, and Abraham killed the ram upon the altar, and brought it up as an offering in the place of his son Isaac. And Abraham sprinkled the blood of the ram upon the altar, and he exclaimed and said, This is in the place of my son, and may this be considered this day as the blood of my son before the Lord. And all that Abraham did on this occasion by the altar, he would exclaim and say, This is in the room of my son, and may it this day be considered before the Lord in the place of my son. And Abraham finished the whole of the service by the altar, and the service was accepted before the Lord, and was accounted as if it had been Isaac. And the Lord blessed Abraham and his seed on that day. Now what about the mother? And Satan went to Sarah, and appeared to her in the figure of an old man, very humble and meek. Are you listening? And Abraham was yet engaged in the burnt offering before the Lord. This was at that time it was going on. And he said unto her, Dost thou not know all the work that Abraham has made with thine only son this day? For he took Isaac and built an altar, and killed him, and brought him up as a sacrifice upon the altar. And Isaac cried and wept before his father, but he looked not at him, neither did he have compassion over him. What's the other M.O. of Satan? The lying, appearing, is a very old man, humble and meek. And Satan repeated these words, and he went from away from her. And Sarah heard all the words of Satan, and she imagined him to be an old man from among the sons of men, whom had been with her son and had come and told her these things. Here's a friend. And Sarah lifted up her voice and wept and cried out bitterly on account of her son. 
and she threw herself upon the ground, and she cast dust upon her head, and she said, O my son Isaac, Isaac, my son, O thou, I had this day died instead of thee. And that she continued to weep, and said, It grieves me for thee, O my son, my son Isaac, O that I had died this day in thy stead. You see what was left out? The emotions and how Satan works. So Satan, he couldn't get Isaac to murder his son. So he was going to attack Sarah, his wife. And she still continued to weep and said, It grieves me for thee after that I have reared thee and have brought thee up. Now my joy is turned unto mourning over thee. I that had a longing for thee and cried and prayed to God till I bear thee at ninety years old. And now thou hast thou served this day for the knife and the fire to be made an offering. But I console myself with thee, my son, and it's being the word of the Lord, for thou did perform the command of thy God, for who can transgress the word of our God, in whose hands is the soul of every living creature. Thou art just, O Lord, our God, for all thy works are good and righteous, for I also am rejoiced within thy word, which thou didst command, and whilst mine eye weepeth bitterly, my heart rejoiceth. Satan defeated again spiritually and sarah laid her head upon the bosom of one of her handmaids and she became as still as stone she afterward rose up and went about making inquiries till she came to hebron now she now here's to the part where i said what did they do get a divorce and she just move off no she came to hebron and she inquired of all those whom she met walking in the road and no one could tell her what had happened to her son she thought at this time she was looking for his body and she came with her maidservants and men servants to Kirith Arba, which is Hebron. And she asked concerning her son. And she remained there while she sent some of her servants to seek where Abraham had gone with Isaac. They went to seek him in the house of Shem and Eber, and they could not find him. And they sought throughout the land, and he was not there. And behold, what? Satan came to Sarah in the shape of an old man, and he came and stood before her. And he stood, and he said unto her, I spoke falsely unto thee. For Abraham did not kill his son, and he is not dead. And when she heard the word, her joy was so exceedingly violent on account of her son that her soul went out through joy, and she died and was gathered to her people. She was overjoyed. She, she was weak. She had been traveling. She was emotionally a wreck. When she heard this, she jumped with joy, and it killed her, the stress. And when Abraham had finished his service, he returned with his son Isaac to, young, to his young men, and they rose up and went together to Beersheba, and they came home. And Abraham sought for Sarah and could not find her. And he made inquiries concerning her. They said unto him, She went as far as Hebron to seek you both where you had gone, for thus was she informed. Talk about Romeo and Juliet, guys. And that's why Abraham had to go there, find his wife and buried her. She hadn't divorced him she was searching for him and her son while Satan played with her lives that's what he's going to do when he comes back he's almost here guys don't say you haven't had a uh, hour of church today with the word of the Lord heads up be safe